Wir sind Fjerk und wir sind Producers von Berlin, die elektronische Musik machen. Die erste DAW, die wir ever used, I mean seriously used for electronic music, was Machine. And we started really early, 16 or something. And it was like one friend of us came around with that program and he was like, man, you need to try that. Like, it's incredible. It's like a game or something. It was like still the, the phase of life where gaming was the most exciting thing on a computer. Back then we used to have sleepovers and we were basically making music and playing games all night long. That's the difference between gaming and music. On the next day when you wake up, you can listen to something and there is something like you made. When we met the controllers, none of us was actually playing the game anymore. We tried it and we definitely got addicted. Like we didn't know it yet, but it was becoming really important for us in our lives. It's good that we have all our samples on the machine, which we usually use. It's fast to use because you see directly your folders which you uploaded on it. So you have like, for example, kicks. And then you just choose with pad like where you want to have it. You press load. There it is. And then you go to the next pad. You can go to the next folder, which is, let's say, clap. You do press load and then you have to clap. So pick clap and it's like, you can do in like five minutes a beat from the sample digging. When we do beats, we will likely layer them. Like every single sound will most likely be at least two or three sounds if, if you would really look at the different layers. There will be like one lower one, one will have the punch in this, and then the other one might be distorted or something. And you can like you just press the button. If I load it right now, then this step is now here. And they got the other one here, and now we have two of them and they're so they're some better together. Yeah. It, there's so much happening if you put two sounds together, and this is really really focusing on that and that's that's very important for us. Especially for kick drums, sometimes it can take half an hour to make the different layers right in face because that's really changing everything. Looking for a synthesizer or something, you can use all the synthesizer plugins you, you have uh, also on your computer, you use it as a controller. If I go here, I have again for, for like the pre um, set, I have a preview and I think that's really stunning for me. I was like, wow, because always other words you need to load it Press the keys and then I, oh no, that's on it, that's on it. You have a chord function and with the chord function, we also can use it standalone to trigger other stuff. So you can use it as a main sequencer also and yeah. this is also how we usually use it. You can find a really nice chord progression really, really fast. It's either offering you like a set of chords that make sense together or will only play semitones together that make a harmonic sense. In the harmonic section you can choose. You can even change the harmonics to like Arabic harmonics or Japanese. They have different keys, like yeah. it's, it's really interesting. One of our favorite things about the machine is like the really nice internal effects to like colorize the sound. Saturator, there's a lo-fi effect and a distortion. And of course we got a compression, which is super important and a lot of other stuff that you could use creatively for the kick drum, like reverbs to layer it or whatever, but yeah. And also they have different modes, like the saturation for example. It has like a tape saturation and a tube saturation, but also the classic saturation. So you can decide like for what you want to go. For example, for a kick, I wouldn't go for a tape saturation because of the low end. But it's good for synthesizer, for example. You start always with a sampler. If you put in a sample, then you're automatically in a sampler. And then afterwards, I put a saturation and I put like the drive and the contour and the input a little bit lower, so it's not um, so effective. I can put it more on. And you see a lot what's doing, like, but it's too much. So I put it a little bit down. Then I go for a distortion after the saturation to go more for the low ends. Afterwards, we have a reverb, like every big uh, big room techno kick, which uh, has a lot of distortion also needs, needs a little bit of um, reverb. And uh, additionally, you can also put like an EQ on it. And that's pretty much everything. I really like to filter a lot. 
Like the resonance, if you put it on the right thing, you can, uh, with a layer, for example, just give some punch on, on the low. Yeah, you, you can kind of like modulate the attack with it. I mean, there's like an envelope following. You can like literally just, just turn one button and turn it in. Works really well and they all of them sound different actually. And if you put it up like a little bit, like 10%, and you go down with the frequency a little bit, it will actually like slightly follow the attack, which is... Yeah, which is working good for kick drum, especially if you got like lots of overtones there. Then this will clear up after the beginning and yeah, will leave this early impact of the kick drum alone and make it feel bigger, more powerful. The impact will be like bam, and then then you got the then you got the body. One of my favorite things uh, about this uh, internal effects is like the compressor and the internal side chain. You don't have to do so much, and you you will directly get what you want, and the kick has more place. That's much faster than with everything I did before, and I think that's that's key in workflow, you know, being fast. We work with one pattern where we write everything inside, so it's the full um, uh, creative part, and then we divide uh, the pattern, and we can say here, like, for example, I, I don't want to have the write, for example, so let's say it. You can also delete it on different ways. I, I can do it with erase, and then press the write, and then it's just deleted. And now I have two patterns. I have one without the right and one with the right. And then when I have that, I can go on and just duplicate it. And now when I press the start, I just can delete the clap. So I have three different layers in like seconds. And then after I have the, the layers, I can combine them with the different patterns of the different parts that you have. For example, the synthesizer, yeah. which is right now that thing. That's the first pattern we have. Just press here and I have a new pattern and it's empty. And now I have two um, parts here in the sequence already, which is like the kick and the empty pattern here. So I can go to scene, you see that's scene one. Now I duplicate, I do the, pretty much the same that I did with patterns. Like I duplicate the scene and now I go here and press pattern one. And for the first thing we had, I, I press pattern two. So two things at the same time are changing, but I have two different scenes. So I go to scene one, which is that. Even whatever you want can change at the same moment. And this is why you have like patterns and scenes. After you wrote all your scenes, let's say I have an intro, scene one, then I have something additional coming, scene two, then scene three, scene four, scene five, scene six. And then you say like, okay, four times scene one, two times scene three, and you have everything which is one, what's a scene in your head already. So you just combine then in the song mode. And the scenes, by the way, is like a sequence for the patterns. They are, they're all family. It's family business. I will help you to come up with uh, new ideas to arrange your songs because you will just change from this part to this part and this more likely will happen in a more random way or like in a different way than if you would do it really in an old school arrangement view that is like in every DAW. If we go to different friends of ours, just to jam, we don't need any uh, MIDI cable or anything to plug in in the studio. We just can put on like Ableton Link, for example, and we are directly connected if we are in the same network. Even there's no internet connection, you can of course open just like a private network anywhere with most of the devices even working with phones nowadays. You can literally synchronize your phone or in, iPads. To, the, to the machine and it's, yeah. it's, it's working flawless. The other time, um, Aaron just had it connected to his computer and uh, we just recorded the stuff and and enable, you know. And then we, sometimes we just put this into a song card again. You can record, of course, the instruments coming out as well, just through your DAW. The machine can offer you something that is beyond your expectation. Having all this collected in this small piece, this is also the most exciting thing about it.